All point of views expressed on Shop Talk 360 are solely the point of views of the individuals and do not represent any company, organization, or group. Shop Talk 360, the industry's dedicated platform for commercial design, construction, and facilities. With more than 25 years building for national retail brands, an award-winning and best-selling author, keynote speaker, industry coach, and event producer, here's our host of Shop Talk 360, Grace Daly. Hey, Shop Talkers. Welcome to our podcast. I have here with us Al Berman, Chairman of the Board with Disaster Recovery International. Al, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure, Grace. So I'm going to jump right into the questions. With the disaster recovery and business continuity professionals in overload during this pandemic, what are you hearing from the industry? Well, Disaster Recovery Institute is a nonprofit organization who serves 15,000 members around the world. And so we've sort of become a clearinghouse for information. Mm -hmm. And if you would ask me this question last week, we would have felt much more a sense of panic. Um, this week, we people have seemed to have settled into their jobs, realized this is going to be a long-term situation, and have started to add more structure, um, and have started to worry more about how people are going to work at home over the long haul. So we're very pleased with the reaction we're hearing from our members about the things that they're doing and the expertise they're bringing to this crisis. Okay, that's promising news to hear. Now, aside from CDC recommendations, are there additional measures the industry has taken to best prevent or mitigate the spread of the virus? Well, the interesting thing is, as usual, industry um, has led the government in reacting to this. So Silicon City mm. and a number of the large firms started to shut them down their operations two weeks ago and move people off site. They realized mm -hmm. that social distancing was one of the keys to reducing the spread of the virus. And so they started to react to that. The CDC and local governments have started to close down operations. The CDC's last guidance, which I think is this week, asked for no more than 50 people to be in a room. <clears throat> um, much wow. of industry has, has restricted it to 10 people over the last two weeks, um, more mm -hmm. conference calls, more working remotely, um, and even when they had to be meetings, those meetings have been held with fewer and fewer people. So we're seeing strategic meetings with upper level management, but even those are being done remotely. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the guidance we're getting is to keep people remote, not mm -hmm. let them congregate and therefore inhibit the spread of the virus. Absolutely. That's so important. Now, as we're learning more about this virus, especially since it hit the U.S. a few weeks ago till now, what is your biggest concern and how are you addressing it, if even possible, to address? Well, I think there are a number of concerns. And based on pandemics that we've had in the past, one mm -hmm. of the first things we're concerned about is misinformation. Mm. Um, we're seeing lots of deniers lots of conspiracy theories, lots mm -hmm. of, in fact, people taking advantage of the situation. So we're oh, seeing no. a lot of fishing going on with Trojan horses, having people click on maps of the virus and actually allowing malware to enter their system. We're seeing spear phishing, which is a form of phishing in which people intend to steal data. We're seeing email impersonation. Um, where an agent is acting as if they're part of the welfare system or the health system and asking for information at the same time they're stealing those things. So we're worried about the security aspects being lowered if it's time. Um, the other mm -hmm. thing we're worried about, and I said this is this misinformation, um, we use basically two sources for information, the World Health Organization and the Center for Disease Control both of those which give objective, up-to-the-minute information. 
And in fact, most of the other news services that you get are actually quoting those two sources. So what we're trying to tell people is to use reliable sources. Don't click on emails that are going to give you instant cures. Just remember, we don't have a vaccine to prevent this, and we don't have an antiviral medication that will cure people. So anybody who contends that they do are really fishing for information and trying to create unfortunate situations. And as you know, people do take advantage of bad situations for their own gain. So That's clearly we're hear. that inform- yeah, clearly information is the key to this. And so we're asking people to really deal with the sources that are most reliable, most objective, and most unbiased. And I think that's one of the things people can do. We all understand the health issues. We understand Mm -hmm. washing your hands. We understand distancing. But it's this information that creates more bad situations during a crisis. And we see it during every crisis where this kind of information is distracting and at some point, is dangerous for people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You bring up a very good point about these, you know, the cyber attacks. That's very concerning. So everyone listening, please spread the news that, unfortunately, to Al's point, that will increase if it has not already. So that's good to know. Now, this segues in nicely into our next question. You touched on this briefly. What do you have to say to individuals who believe they cannot get the coronavirus and have no sense of public safety for others. I think that those people who don't get, don't believe they can get the coronavirus should let me be the beneficiary of their life insurance policy. It's Mm. very likely that Mm. one way or another, two thirds of the population of the country will be affected by this in one way or another. Some very lightly, some more severely. Um, There is no way for you to prevent this if you're going to shake everybody's hand. We've seen Mm -hmm. politicians get it. We've seen the heads of states get it. We've seen actors and actresses get it. Mm -hmm. Truly, those people who believe they're immune can only be immune for one reason, and that's because they've had this virus before. And as this is a new virus, that's impossible. So all of us are subject to getting it. And I think uh, those people who don't believe they can get it are really going to cause a a public safety hazard by spreading it from one person to another. Um, Mm -hmm. Anybody who is found spreading this intentionally is in violation of the law and subject to penalties, but more importantly, will probably be isolated for a long period of time and do untold damage to the public. Um, We each have a public responsibility to do the right thing in this kind of crisis. And we should do that. Absolutely. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Now, last question. How can organizations work effectively with staff being remote, working from home? Well, this is probably the biggest question for industry now. Um, And we've we've finished doing some kind of analysis on it. So one of the Mm -hmm. things that we forget about working from home, where all electronic communications can be switched, is we forget about the mundane things in life. We forget about mail and express mail services that are one of the most overlooked aspects of moving from a centralized operation to a decentralized one. Um, In some environments, the source of physical documents is really important to how they run their operation. And Mm -hmm. we've forgotten what to do with it. I've just spoken to a number of people who went, whoops, what do I do about my mail? Uh, What do I do about express mail? And there are things you can do about it, but the immediacy is that you have to have a mechanism to forward that now. Um, Delays in responding to mail, especially during a crisis, creates undue anxiety on the part of customers seeking information. So if customers have sent you documentation and you haven't gotten it because you haven't forwarded your mail or found the means of getting that mail, you all of a sudden put an extra burden on the phone systems and text messaging facilities. We saw this specifically during 9-11, where organizations were uprooted from their normal occupancy, moved, but forgot to move mail, forgot to move express mail packages. So that's one of Mm. the things that we can do in facilities. 
in particular are going to be burdened by this. And they have some time now to make sure they have home addresses, they have methods of forwarding mail, but I think that's an important aspect we've missed. The other one is, is probably more in the lines of receiving and returning phone calls. Many of us only have one phone, um, and it's yeah. now become our cell phone. And we've got to be able to differentiate between the way we handle personal phone calls and business phone calls. And with them going to the same telephone number, it becomes a problem. So there are services like Skype, which will allow you to have a Skype phone number, and as most of us are staying home and have internet mm -hmm. access, the phone will ring on your computer or it will ring on your cell phone, but it will ring as a different number. And so if people start to do this, which is very quick, very inexpensive, um, phone calls are about somewhere around three cents a minute, and that's even international, mm -hmm. um, people will be able to handle business phone calls apart from home phone calls and personal phone calls. And with children being home from school, the number of personal phone calls is going to increase. So it's one of the things we talk about. The other thing we talk to organizations about is the lack of collaboration when people aren't in the same place. And so we're recommending that they start to look at collaborative tools. Google Hangouts, Zoom Basic, Skype for Business Basic, Cisco's WebEx Personal, which will allow them up to 100 people on a conference call. Easy to set up, relatively mm -hmm. inexpensive, in fact, some of them free. But it allows you to keep that collaborative spirit while you're working away from all of your organizational people. Um, mm. And that, of course, means that you have to be able to deal with the cybersecurity issues and make sure you have that. So we're talking to organizations about having virtual private networks for those people who are using their laptops or their computers instead of the corporate ones. Just remember, a lot of people didn't have time to go back to their office to get their um, computers. And I think mm -hmm. that that's one of the things we're starting to look at working remotely. It's a totally different environment. Um, and I think that's one of the things that organizations have to deal with, snail mail, express mail, communications, collaboration, so that they can have the same effectively working remotely as they do when they're working with each other. Yeah. Wow. Well, that was, that was some great information you gave us. Absolutely. I feel like we're just all pivoting as quickly as we can. And my biggest takeaway from this chat was just getting accurate information. You know, uh, there's so many different uh, news media channels out there, and ultimately it's the World Health Organization and the CDC. You know, the cybersecurity, that was a huge eye-opener for me. I didn't even think about that, that, that these folks are, are going to be taking advantage to try to cyber attack. But the collaborative tools were, was very, very helpful, Al. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. I look forward to touching base again with you soon, perhaps in a few weeks, as this continues to unfold. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, Craig. Hey, Shop Talkers. Welcome to our podcast. This is a podcast to track some of the concerns, ongoing concerns with the coronavirus. I have with us our guest, Angel Cara. She's a Senior Vice President of Retail with Sparks Marketing Corp. Hey, Angel, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Grace. You know, I feel like, you know, by the time this podcast even goes out, I'm sure there'll be more developments. Things are changing almost on a daily, if not hourly basis that we've heard of. But I wanted to kind of chat with you and understand what's been going on and how it's impacted our industry. So I'll ask you real quickly the first question. How has the coronavirus impacted your specific industry? Great question, and we've actually been dealing with it for the last few weeks uh, because we do 50 to 60 percent of our retail manufacturing in China, and mm -hmm. we had extended delays in our shops with Chinese New Year and then extended beyond that until the government gave them approval to open up. Mm -hmm. So fortunately, we've, we had enough inventory for our clients like Comcast to weather the delay, and now all of our shops are open. They may not be at 100% capacity, but they are busy, and we are starting to ship inventory again. 
So we, we've been feeling the impacts. We've been working through assessing all options, timelines, and where we needed to, producing domestically. And, and I think that is key is having both domestic and import capabilities is critical. So you actually have employees in China, you mentioned. Yes. Yes, I have 11 Sparks employees, including project managers and engineers in China that have literally been, we've been getting updates from them since, you know, early February. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they're all well. Their families are well. They are. Fortunately, okay. everyone is, is doing well, and they are working from home, but working working closely with our shops and and trying to get back to normal. So that does give me a gl- little bit of glimmer of hope with everything. That sure. The news that we're hearing is I see them getting back into their routine, and, and we're, uh, again, shipping and help, helping our clients. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's good to hear. That's very promising to hear. Now, here in the in in the U.S., what measures has your organization taken to prevent or mitigate the spread of this virus? We are following the same measures that most companies are, and according to the CDC, including providing work from home as an option, limit on necessary travel, extra cleanings, and we mm-hmm. are having daily leadership team meetings across all of our offices. We have offices uh, on the West Coast, East Coast, Detroit. So making sure that we're on the same page and that we're communicating and and that our employees feel the support. Okay. Yeah, that's so important. I think a few days ago I I read that there were some employees of of a retail chain that felt like they did not get direction. They were very unsure of what was going on. And, of course, so when when there's no information or no shared information, it just causes more concern and and, uh, and more worry. I believe that uh, retail chain finally did communicate down to the store level where their folks are, you know, in the stores selling. So obviously this is going to impact everyone in, in some way, shape, and form. And I think if, if we just continue communication, that's important, right? And Absolutely. Just at least a, yeah, at least a flow of communication, even if we don't know because it's still unfolding. We say, hey, we don't know, but we'll find out, and we're in this together, and we're going to work it out. So no one really feels like they're out there alone. So now, as we're still learning more about the coronavirus since it hit the U.S., and, of course, the president had a speech yesterday evening, what is your biggest concern, and how are you addressing it, if it's even possible to address? Great, great question. I guess my biggest concern is the unknown and the domino effect on the economy. Uh, So right now, Mm -hmm. we feel like we're in a good spot, but there will be a lot of businesses and individuals impacted by the decreased travel, the NBA being canceled, you know, not the NCAA tournament with no fans. So what does that do with that trickle-down effect economy and the consumer? So, again, communication is key, even though if you don't know anything, but at least we are dealing with the facts that we have. And mm-hmm. in terms of addressing it, you know, I tell my team at work and my children that we need to understand and assess the data that we know today. Don't let our minds be our worst enemy. Let's not overreact. But we do need to plan accordingly. We, we need to be smart with our day-to-day business and be prepared, whatever that means, and that could change from this week to next. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yep, I feel like it probably won't be us chatting with a couple of our industry folks, and it probably won't be a couple till a couple of weeks till we see the full picture of the impact uh, on our country. And it, maybe you answered this last question I have because you spoke a lot about preparedness. But what's the best advice you have as a leader of our industry, and also as a leader of your of your home, of your family, on how to deal during these uncertain times? Well, first and foremost, prioritize your health, and that goes for any time, Mm -hmm. the flu season or the coronavirus, you know, follow the guidelines. (laughs) We should wash our hands every day. So hopefully this this habit stays. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I have uh, one or two guys that are coughing. I'm like, go home, please. If you want to work from home, work from home. If you're sick, please take the time off and get better. Mm -hmm. So it really is. You know, prioritize your health, follow the guidelines, and let's keep things in perspective. Because if we overreact, the rest of the team's going to overreact, and my kids will too. They're at the age where they understand what's going on. Yeah, sure, so absolutely. And it's how do you keep that balance perspective? Yep, 
Yep, I love that. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and I'm sure we'll check in with you as we continue to get more updates on this coronavirus. And it is very hopeful and a glimmer of hope with China being up and running again. I think we've seen them go through their worst. It peaked and it leveled off, thankfully. And we we'll just got to brace ourselves for the next few weeks and just let it slowly run its course and kind of level off here in the country as well. Agreed. Well, thank you for having me, and, and yes, best of luck to all of us. <laughs> yes, definitely. Thanks so much, Angel. I'll speak to you soon. Thanks, Grace. Hey, Shop Talkers, welcome to another podcast. We're here, and we're going to be chatting with Marilyn Brennan, Vice President of National Accounts with Cummings Resources. Hi, Marilyn. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. We were chatting a little bit earlier. These are very strange times where we've encountered, you know, it's a very sensitive time and you know, be dealing with this coronavirus crisis we have in our country. It is. It's uh, unprecedented in my time. Um, I know we dealt with swine flu before, but it did not seem widespread and impacting the globe as much as, as the coronavirus has. And it yes. is definitely impacting life as we know it. Absolutely. It's it's a little scary, you know, the uncertainty. And it's really interesting as I talk to so many folks and as I record with so many folks, there's a certain sensitivity, and yet we don't want to be too grave or doom and gloom about it either. So it's this fine balance of how we communicate, which is all kind of new to all of us, I think. So yeah, I I'm going to... The, the challenge, sorry, the challenge is, you know, information versus hysteria. And, yeah. um, you know, people get very divided on that. And um, I'm all about information. And I, while I sit here and not in a high-risk category, we're not so insensitive to realize that there are so many people in our lives and around the world that are. So I think, you know, having information is important and discussing it uh, rationally, but also taking it very seriously. I agree. It uh, can be polarizing you know, for people. Yes, yes, as we've seen with the political landscape, for sure. Okay, so uh, jumping right into our first question, how has the coronavirus impacted your specific business? And maybe you want to share a little bit about what Cummings Resources does in our industry for some of our listeners. Um, well, Cummings Resources is a 75-year-old company, so we're relatively new. Uh, it's a joke. Um, we are a <laughs> national sign program management company, so we fabricate and project manage national uh, brands like Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, Taco Bell. So we do, you know, hundreds and hundreds of signs a week and a month, mm -hmm. and we manage uh, national accounts. So we are working in every state across the United States, and so this can greatly impact um, our industry as we see a slowdown in retail um operations and growth. We also see an you know, um, impact with uh, just people that are sick and uh, the workforce becoming uh, a little affected. So uh, Cummings Resources right now, I mean, our immediate impact for me in business development is the postponement of very large trade shows. We are in the height of trade show season, as we call mm -hmm. it, where mm -hmm. we kick off the year of meeting with our um, prospective counterparts and our decision makers of the industry. And it's a huge impact, a lot of financial delays as far as money that we put out for booths, for travel, just these fees to register for these shows that are now postponed till June, and we're hoping, you know, June and, and therefore you know, after that, and we're hoping that these take place. We don't know, um, you know, what the what the length of this, this uh, coronavirus is going to be. We don't know when the impact of travel and large group you know, meetings will cease to be an issue. So we right now are um, postponing things like specs. I know a lot of the point shows have been postponed. Anything during the month of March and April right now is very, you know, it's very scary to try to meet with 500 people uh, mm -hmm. in, a, in a conference center and not be worried about it. So right now, when I typically go into major um, trade show mode, it's when I get to actually meet the people, uh, find out what they're doing for the year, find out, you know, where they need vendor support, new vendors, change in vendors, and, you know, not having that face-to-face -face time with these people that I would normally get to meet, I now have to try to access them through, you know, direct emails, phone calls, LinkedIn, and it's just not the same as getting to meet mm -hmm. people face-to-face -face and Absolutely. have conversations. 
Yeah, so those are that's one of the immediate impacts. Travel bans, you know, we saw that a lot of the retailers, the national retailers, put a travel ban for their employees, and now mm-hmm. we're starting to see people not allowing visitors to come to their headquarters. Um, mm. 7-Eleven was one of them, and Yum, they decided that they don't want any outside vendors uh, coming to visit them. So again, it limits our ability to have you know real relationship kind of sales and um, and project management. We're not allowed to you know, visit our clients. So it's um, very impactful right now. Yeah. And it's, and, and I guess, is, I guess it's just the uncertainty of how long this is going to go on. You know, everyone's very hopeful that, you know, there's been all speculation, but everyone's hopeful that maybe in the spring slash early summer, we'll see things taper off. Maybe the weather will be helpful in uh, mitigating additional cases of it or spread of it or severity of it. So, and again, everything is just so unknown. So now, does Cummings Resources, do you have employees overseas or no? All we do US not. Based? We okay. do not. Um, so, mm-hmm. you know, we are all in, basically, the United States. <clears throat> However, we do use a large um, pool of subcontractors as national installers. So, um, and we do have some that are you know, out of the country uh, in the contiguous U.S., So, you know, we will get impacted um, from that aspect, but also a lot of our supplies to manufacture signage comes from overseas. You know, a lot of the LEDs are manufactured in in China. Um, Now, we don't buy directly from them, but this will impact our supply chain. uh, Sure. Uh, Mm -hmm. Now, we heard about some of the measures your clients have taken or potential clients have taken, but what measures has your organization taken to best prevent or mitigate the spread of this uh, coronavirus? So luckily, you know, the bulk of our, you know, business is obviously contained. We have uh, manufacturing facilities. So, you know, watching our employees, making sure anyone who's sick or doesn't feel well would stay home. Um, you know, we do have measures in place, obviously, for that. And then all of our work as project managers, uh, like most people, can be done remotely. Um, you know, we are very web-based and, um, you know, LinkedIn telecommunication-wise. So, you know, mm-hmm. we are set up to continue operating. As long as our clients are able to, you know, participate in the process, we are, you know, we're here to business as usual. You know, we can do whatever we do from our homes. Uh, we a good portion of our team has uh, worked remotely uh, at any given time and could do so, you know, in a heartbeat. So, you know, we're we're set up to work through this. We are here to help our clients in any way we can. Um, you know, obviously, people being out sick would, um, you know, sometimes impact uh, small small parts of our process. But we have so many people behind each team uh, to have redundancy on every account. So we're not worried about. Um, you know, maintaining highest standards for our clients at this point. Okay, great. That's good to know. Um, now, so as we're still learning more about this virus since it reached the U.S., what's your biggest concern and how are you addressing it if it's even possible to address it? You know, me personally, because I do, you know, I, I always joke that I live in airports and I do like you any do. of my counterparts. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So the more I hear about, you know, airports having to, you know, clean and, um, you know, people coming through and finding out that they are positive, you know, for coronavirus and they're still traveling. I mean, we've always have been exposed to crazy amounts of germs as travelers. You know, mm-hmm. um, so I don't tend to get, um, I, I think my biggest fear is that I'm underestimating my exposure, maybe, um, because I feel mm. like, I'm not, not that I'm immune to it, but just, you know, Oh, if it happens to me, I'll be fine. Um, you know, I fly all the time. So I think sometimes that uh, uh, lack of of concern or um, maybe uh, underestimating the severity of this uh, mm-hmm. is going to start to impact people. Um, mm-hmm. So right now, I think my biggest concern would be just staying healthy and and uh, you know, I'm pretty quarantined uh, or self isolated. Uh, in general, because I am, you know, I do live alone, so I can kind of stay out of the norm. But mm-hmm. um, you know, air, air travel is definitely a concern. So mm. I think mm-hmm. I'm, I'm deciding about when I will start cutting any kind of travel, and uh, it'll it'll probably be very soon. 
Mm -hmm. Sure, absolutely. And especially with um, someone like yourself and, and many folks in our industry, always on the go, just always on the go, always ready to service folks, clients, you know, operational teams. It's definitely we have to kind of step back and take a breather and, and just look at the, the concern has a from a holistic point of view. But OK, yeah, definitely. I, I found that the same with me as well, too. You know, I've kind of held off on travel for the next 45 days to see where everything, you know, to just continue to monitor further developments um, and make a decision from there. But, um, okay, now last question, and to wrap up our Bead Round show, what's the best advice you have for our industry and our families during these uncertain times? Well, I think for our industry would be to, um, you know, kind of hold the hold the course here. Um, you know, we have a lot of knee-jerk reactions, I think, with, um, mm -hmm. with retail and restaurants and hospitality industry. Everybody's getting impacted. But, you know, I think our industry, we are, um, we're always working six months to 18 months, you know, ahead. So I don't know that we're going to feel the impact this month, but it might be in three months that, you know, we have this kind of little slow up. But I think, you know, just to be diligent and, um, you know, be respectful and understand that, you know, maybe hopping on a plane is, is exasperating the situation. So not to mm -hmm. you know, be so driven with our own goals that we're not looking at, you know, the greater goals of everyone else. And if it's not essential, then maybe take a break and take a minute and, and um, you know, we will recover from it. Um, for our families, you know, I have a mother in an assisted living center. She just mm. found out yesterday we cannot visit her until this is over. So, um, you know, it is important. Anyone who's been traveling or, you know, could be exposed to just be careful around those that um, are more susceptible um, to the understanding. And, and stop hoarding toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I am one of the hoarders. I'm sorry. I've got a lot of kids. Though. <laughs> I'm one of the hoarders. I, I understand that. I actually yeah. keep saying, you know, stop picking on the people that, you know, if you get shut in for three weeks with a couple kids, you know, you're going to run out of things. So, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very respectful. I think people are buying what they think they need. Um, you know, but again, I, I know it's kind of crazy times, but um, I, I know we'll get through this. Um, I think get tested, be careful, you know, stay away from people if you think you've been exposed or, you know, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, if we take a couple weeks where we just all kind of, you know, hunker down and only do what's essential, I think maybe we could, you know, really flatten this curve of the uh, uprise in this, this illness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You said something earlier which really resonates, and, and and you mentioned understanding, and that's so important. And, and I wish more folks would be understanding, um, whether it's to their own employees or the clients be more understanding to their service providers or just having that extra bit of understanding. Um, instead of spouting off, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm kind of uh, really exhausted seeing everybody saying, stop all this hysteria. I don't think this is hysteria when it's a global pandemic. I'm not yeah, the one sure. right now. My hair is on fire, but I'm also very respectful of the fact that the number of deaths around the world mm -hmm. um, haven't really hit the curve here yet you know we haven't you know had the reporting that other ones have and you know I think for me I'm always you know cautiously um, you know prepared and I think you know we should be very understanding that it may not affect you personally and I, I feel like a lot of people just want to blame this on the media and you know to me I, I'm I guess I thrive on information um, mm -hmm. I'm not out um, and you know about the apocalypse, but, you know, it certainly is something that makes me think twice about what I'm doing, and I think it's important. So um, I don't think knowledge is, is hysteria, and I think, um, you know, it's a, a, an hour-by-hour hour changing living and breathing pandemic, and we have to be very diligent and, and inform ourselves correctly. Yeah. So we'll get I, I, it. Sure. We will. We will definitely. Well, Marilyn, thank you so much for joining us, and I hope to catch up with you on a future podcast, and we'll uh, check in with you periodically as well, too. So thank you so much. Stay safe and be well. Thank you. You too. Thanks for joining Shop Talk 360, real conversations in the commercial design, construction, and facilities industry. You can reach out to us at grace at gracedaily.com.